Hello and welcome to First Impressions. Today we're looking at the 1 to 48 scale de Havilland Tiger Moth from Airfix. This is a lovely little kit. Come and have a look at it with me. Uh, produced in India as they uh, most usually are um, and it tells us that the length is 152 millimeters width is 184 millimeters and there's 59 pieces in there now obviously when I built it it was in the old style softer plastic uh, I haven't looked in the box I've only just cut the tape so I don't know whether we're getting that yes we are I was there was part of me hoping that they'd put it in the new um, harder plastic because it tends to crispen up the the molding that can be a bit soft but we'll we'll have a look first thing we're going to do as usual is take a look at the instructions so uh, we have the usual a4 color portrait um, format uh, build instructions which is a staple booklet um, we've got some history in different languages gives us some um, specifications and then we're instructed to wash our parts um, and then as we open up the instruction book uh, that carries on and we get to our assembly instructions uh, can I get all that in try and get all of this in for you so you can see both pages yeah that's pretty much pretty much it so uh, assembly instructions basically study the drawings then we have our assembly icons um, then we're straight into the build so uh, step one adding a seat to the uh, floor pan then the rear bulkhead um, then we've got this strange assembly with the seat going into a sort of bulkhead obviously it's a two-seater aircraft um, then we've got uh, two control sticks uh, with the painting instructions as you go standard practice for uh, airfix uh, then we're painting um, part of the, the cockpit part of the inside of the fuselage installing our um, floor pan um, then we um, have I can't remember can't remember whether you could see those or not but those are those are going inside the engine block which is molded in you can see you've got sort of half the engine and they did that on um, the, the little uh, 172 um, 109 and then didn't give you the option to see it but you get the option to see this engine um, right and then we've got um, dials being added individual dials for the uh, decals which is really really nice um, going on to um, uh, um, getting installed there but you know it's really nice that they've done them as individual decals and that's part of the reason why it's a skill level two I guess nice little picture there giving us the the geometry and then we go to step eight and we have an option to cut these out and show them as open um, so you can leave them closed up or you can uh, cut them out and show them as open I can't remember what I did I will bring the model down for the end of the video and you can see what it looks like built up um, then we put in um, another section of the uh, engine in place um, gives us an option to drill a couple of holes if you want to mount the stand that they haven't sold for years um, so but if you happen to have one you could put it on um, then we bring in the other fuselage half uh, in and closing that up um, then we've got this like blister going on to the fuselage the uh, manifold going on and a bit of the frame um, then we've got the top piece going on which uh, is a cover and then we have this optional bit where you can have that left open um, and you can see the engine which is uh, really really nice um, and this builds together better than the chipmunk which has a similar arrangement but this builds up better than the chipmunk uh, then we're moving to the the tail and we've got a little jig here that you can use um, um, 
to file away an area of uh, that's highlighted in green um, and that is if you want to install um, the tail with this with this thing on so I'm guessing because uh, they don't tell you it, it's uh, an option I'm guessing there'll be uh, a different iteration of this released at some point probably with a with a different tail um, but yeah that what it, it worked really well that system um, when we did it I, I remember then we're installing our tail pieces um, and the skid it doesn't have a tail wheel it has a skid um, then step 21 and um, we're putting in the lower wings which is all one piece which is nice and easy then we're installing the uh, upper supports um, and this thing that looks like a horn back to front I'm I'm sure uh, it's not but whatever it is it, it goes in there then we have um, this little bulge that goes in the center of the top wing we're putting the supports into the top wing first then flipping it over and mounting it in and it's one of the easiest biplane um, wing assemblies I've ever done uh, definitely um, easier than some of the Edward ones have done <laughs> certainly certainly easier than the Gota was um, so yeah it's a, a nice nice easy construction um, you can see it's got nice sturdy mounting points it's well considered and well engineered um, then if you're doing scheme A you need to put the decals on before you install these parts see 20 and 21 there um, because they sit over the the decal um, but it's not an issue for the other scheme uh, then we're putting in the uh, the supports for the the wheels and then we're adding the wheels which are weighted which is nice unless you want to show it in flight because obviously they don't retract so uh, then you're going to have to get some milliput or something and 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 sort of sort out the shape of the tires a bit um there's two different um propeller blades depending on whether you're doing paint scheme a or paint scheme b uh then we have these little they're like head cushions i think uh that go in in step 31 and then the glazing goes in um then you've got that door option if you cut them out earlier you can put them in um, and showing you uh, once again to install the doors now I hand painted this because it's only a, a tiny little thing and it worked really really well um, so you could paint all this without having to mask it so yeah very it was a nice experience then for the experienced modeler who may wish to add them to their model the position of the many bracing wires and control cables are indicated in the following steps 35 to 42 because you've essentially built the aircraft here at step 34 so they have nicely shown you um, that you need a couple of cables going through there a bit of stretch sprue is good for that um, cables underneath the um, uh, wing um, in front of the uh, forward windshield there um, it shows you the positions of dotted lines really nicely done considered all the angles nice and easy to do and then it shows you the rudder cables being installed there different views very very nice and then you've got the um, elevator cables being added on um, all of which I seem to remember I did then step 39 and we carry on with more installation of the rigging um, so this is uh, now uh, rigging to support the wings um, and it's showing you you've got some connection points uh, to use yeah I mean it's, it's a really thorough rigging um, diagram you know um, much better much better than many you get and that's it that can I mean 41 steps but only if you do the rigging um, then paint scheme a which was my favorite when I got this is it's really really nice a really nice scheme um, you've got plenty of decals there they're showing you again that the individual dials going on um, 
these decals here that I mean that's one full-size decal you'll see in a minute and then you put the roundels on separately um, but it all works really lovely um, the anti-slip is also separate um, and I actually painted this in the uh, 19 which is the gloss red straight from the tin and it came out beautiful um, so this time I may well do paint scheme B um, which is um, all over silver um, with uh, yellow yellow stripes um, so it, it's a, a little less interesting but there might be some um, different decals knocking around they have re-released this um, in a, with a military format I think uh, since this were, this particular kit came out so um, yeah uh, very nice kit it is too so let's have a look at the decals so we get a big decal sheet cartograph of course which means we've got really really nice decals and you can see here these check decals with the uh, spaces so you can position your roundels perfectly really really nicely the only thing in the common section is the uh, cockpit dials then the rest of it is split up to the two paint schemes uh, and actually you've got more decals on paint scheme B than paint scheme A because you've got some stencils that uh, paint scheme A doesn't have um, but yeah um, nothing wrong with those sprue A and we have our two fuselage halves um, two different tails um, and um, parts for the engine cowling um, as well um, so as we look at the fuselage it's got nice detail I think this is harder plastic not the current harder plastic but they had there was a sort of a I don't think they actually ever formally announced it but they went from the soft plastic to a hard plastic that was the same color as the soft plastic then to this darker uh, color that they're using now and this appears to be the harder plastic I don't remember whether um, when I built the original it, it was or not but I think it was the softer one so um, we've got um, nice detail uh, we can see the the doors in the side there which you can cut out if you like got the little footholds there and then we've got a nice sort of stretched fabric look to it um, all looks really quite nice there's a little bit of um, sink in the engine block there but that gets covered up if if memory serves um, and then on the other side there is some nice detail it's all crisp and nicely molded we've got some rivet detail on there as well and when we look inside there is no uh, ejector pins in the visible areas so um, it's all uh, nice it might be a little bit chunky but it's not too bad um, then we've got the uh, cowling uh, uh, doors there they do have ejector pins in but only one and they're easy to sort out um, not a problem at all um, the front face um, appears to be nice and crisp as well um, the sprue gates attach on the on the surface rather than the back surface um, but it's before the time that uh, Airfix had started doing that and then we've got some nice texturing on the uh, tail there you can see the stretched fabric look it really does look good um, so yeah no problems at all with any of those parts it's a nice little set of parts Our second sprue has uh, the wings on and has the propellers on. I think one of my propellers has broken off from the sprue. Um, I'm fairly sure that one was mounted in there. 
Um, this was loose in the bag. Doesn't... Oh yeah, there is a nick in the blade, which is uh, a bit annoying. Um, the sprue gates are on the blades as well, which is also a bit annoying, but um, you can tidy it up okay. I think, I seem to recall, that's the propeller for paint scheme A and the one with the sort of chopped off tips is uh, B. So we've got our wings, they're solid so you've got no joining to do which is really nice uh, and despite the fact that you, you've therefore got some thick chunky plastic there is no sink in it uh, which is really really nice but you do have some lovely texturing and you can see the different texturing there on the leading edge as opposed to the rest of the wing it really does look authentic um, yeah very very nice indeed and we've got some rivet detail around some of the metal work in the center there um, and it's the same with the lower wing really nice uh, detailing going on we've got a little raised strip there for the uh, anti-slip which ultimately will help with your decal placement as well and then as I flip them over you can see the location points uh, you know the big deep location points you're not going to have any problems uh, fitting those so uh, very nice indeed yeah uh, looks great uh, detail is lovely it's all nice and crisp there's no flash no sink really good really really good Final sprue now, and this covers off all of the other parts. Um, so basically all the smaller parts are on here. Uh, and note that there is another third propeller, which suggests uh, more variants to come. I mean, there's plenty of things they can do with the Tiger Moth. Loads and loads of them. Uh, foreign service, no doubt, uh, and, and all sorts of stuff. And as the aircraft comes from the early 30s, um, I'm sure it's got, um, and, and it's still going today, I'm sure it, it's something we'll see released many, many times. So we've got our um, little area there for our, our, our dash, um, and we, we don't have bezels, but we've got nice little raised areas for the dials to go on, and they look great when they're in. Um, we've got our control sticks, the little uh, seats there, which are fairly plain, no uh, harnesses on them or anything like that. No provision for harnesses in the kit. Bulkheads, um, floor pan, no sink. Again, unlike the Chipmunk, which was dreadful for sink, uh, this is really nice. Um, we've got nice detail on the uh, um, uh, landing gear uh, uh, framework there. You can see the little pivots and fasteners on there. Um, some tiny little details there, you have to be careful of those. I seem to recall I might have broken one of those. And we've got our tail skid, our tyres, which are single piece tyres. They're a little tricky to paint. Um, you have to sort of trim a cocktail stick and wedge it in, I seem to remember. Um, then we've got, not quite sure what that was. I can't remember what that is. Not even sure if it's used in this version. Um, but we've got our exhaust, you can see it's nice and uh, delicately done. Engine parts, um, some of the uh, fittings that go on the outside of the fuselage. And then we've got our wing struts, and again, they're really nicely depicted. Um, bit of careful clean up, but it's just um, removing the um, sprue gate uh, knobs and just checking there's no seam showing. And that is pretty much it. This last last bit being the bit that goes on the top of the top wing has a little uh, uh, stick that goes in. I think it's that 114 that, that goes in there as I recall. So very nice. And then we've got our little open doors there if that's, that's what you're going to do. So uh, yeah, uh, not a bad set of parts at all. Again, they're, they're all uh, nice and... Um, uh, tightly molded uh, um, there's no issues with flash or sink or anything that i can see um, and they've even got the 
uh, de Havilland logo on the caps, which is nice. So, yeah, it's it, all in all, uh, not bad. A little basic in places um, and missing seat harnesses, but that's all good. So let's have a look at our clear parts. Well, our clear parts come in their own clear um, uh, plastic bag within the bag of parts. And we've got just two windscreens on there, which are lovely and clear, um, sparkling in the in my uh, lamp. Very, very nice. Um, distortion, yeah. Um, but you're not going to notice it when it's on, I can assure you. In fact, I can show you in a moment. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with those. Um, and because there's just one flow in, they're nice and clear, no spidering. Really good. So that is our plastic parts let's take a couple of pictures of that last uh, last sprue uh, then we'll round up So there you have it, Airfixers 1 to 48 scale de Havilland Tiger Moth. They have re-released this um, with uh, different markings, but it's essentially the same kit. So it's relevant for any future uh, releases as well. So um, what's my thoughts on it? Well, it's a lovely little kit, actually. Um, let, let's just go through this step by step. Instructions. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the instructions. They're really good. They're really clear, easy to follow. Um, yeah, the, the, I couldn't criticise the instructions really. I personally really like Airfix uh, instructions, probably because I'm just so familiar with them, but I do uh, really like their instructions. So I, I personally don't have um, any issues with them. So can I look at the instructions understand how to build the model and end up with a completed model yeah so big tick no issues with the instructions decals well they're cartographed so there's no problems with the decals they're really nicely done there's no uh, excessive margin you're not going to put the decal on the wing and have loads of overhanging margin that you've got to try and trim off without breaking the uh, the decal so yeah no no issues at all with the um with the decals really really nice um then the plastic parts themselves um well there's a little bit of soft molding going on in places it's a little bit um basic in places the seats for example um and obviously you don't get any figures um but uh, oh and you don't get any harnesses either uh, and, and for me, that's a bit of a shame. They, they should provide some solution for the harness. If they're not going to provide figures, then we need the harnesses on, on display attached as they would be to the seats. So whether that's a decal or they put a bit of photo etch in or they mould them onto the seats and give you an option of seat with or seat without harness, I don't care. But they should give us a solution to it. Um, so, you know, that, that that's a little niggle there. Um, otherwise, you know, it's it's all crisply uh, uh, moulded, even, even where it's softly moulded. It's nice and crisp. It's not rough. Uh, there's no flash. There's no sink particularly. And where there is, it's getting covered up. So, um, yeah, there's no issues with ejector pins or anything like that. Uh, the only ejector pins you've really got to clean up is um, if you're having the uh, engine on display. So, uh, yeah, actually, it, it, it's it, it's not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad at all. It, it's, it's very, very passable. So from that point of view, um, then you've got to say, yeah, it's quite a nice kit. Um, at 148 scale, it's quite small. Um, it's fairly quick to build. And as I remember it, it was very fun to build. And I'll show you the finished article. 
uh, which is here and you can see it uh, it, it went together um, and looked really looked the part when it was done and um, it's a bit dusty because this one doesn't go in a display case um, and it appears that I part rigged it not fully rigged it I don't know why but I did um, but yeah you can see we've got no visible uh, ejector pin in there the engines on display and looks really nice and you can see those dials and things in there. I'll take a couple of pictures so you can get an idea of what that looks like built up. Um, so yeah, um, it, it, I remember it being a, a really fun build and it certainly looks like um, a Tiger Moth, which at the end of the day is what we're trying to achieve. So yeah, it's a nice little kit and if you fancy picking something up for a, a, just to change your pace for a couple of weekends, then um, this is a, a nice way of doing it. Um, and there's bound to be lots of aftermarket decals out for this already, I'm sure. So, uh, you know, you can probably fill your boots on different variants. So there you have it. That's my thoughts on Airfix's 148 Tiger Moth. I hope that was useful uh, and enjoyable and I will leave you with a couple of pictures of the completed build which is very unusual for a first impressions video. Um, until next time, you take care, enjoy your modelling and I will see you very soon. Bye for now. Hi, and thanks for watching. You can support the channel by hitting the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss any content that I put out. Model Kit Stuff is a self funded channel, and um, I don't do membership or Patreon or buy me a coffee. So if you'd like to further donate to the channel and ensure the cameras keep rolling and the content keeps coming, then you can consider making a donation uh, through my PayPal. You will find a link to that in the text below. You enjoy your modelling and I'll see you soon.